We want a Bill's car for Hot Rod Homecoming, and you know the easy way would have been just to throw it in a transporter and have it shipped out, but there's no fun in that. So we tried to come up with something as fun and stupid as we could, and so driving it 2,000 miles in the dead of winter from Bill's home in Nashville to the Hot Rod Digs in LA seemed like a, a really good and stupid idea, and so that's what we've done. Well, this must be Hillbilly living with all these junk cars back here. Good to see you. Yeah. Good, doing great. How are you? I'm good, except it's icy out there. Yeah, it is getting, weather is getting kind of crummy. <laughs> it's just been a car that I've had since it was finished in early 1979. And thankfully, I never disposed of the car, never updated it. Uh, when I got some of my other cars done, it kind of got to be something you'd take out and drive every now and then, but it wasn't your main deal. This is Bill Aiken's Channel 32 Roadster. It's got a 37 tube front end, 327 Chevy that he just recently rebuilt. It's got cast iron Corvette transmission and a 57 Chevy rear end. This is the car that was featured in December 1979 Hot Rod Magazine. And it was used in the early 80s at the Hot Rod Magazine Nationals. And it's pretty much the way it was, except for Bill's recent freshening. He rebuilt the engine, New radiator. No, it's not new, it's just reconditioned. It just had the leaks repaired. Okay. Packed the wheel bearings like you say and put new spark plug wires on it. I think it's good to go. It's the middle of January, so I suspect that we're gonna have some rain and maybe even some snow. Tomorrow we'll be on the road. We plan to be back in LA by Friday or Saturday. This is Bill's other garage. He's got a lot of projects. So he's got that 61 Indy car to redo. He's got that turbine engine over there, and uh, I think he should put that in a tea bucket. What are you going to do with that? Well, I was going to get it cranked up and probably cut my leg off. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's one of them things you're wondering why in the hell you ever bought that, you know? I can give a thousand dollars for it. I'm going to take the seat out, and we're just going to put a little bit of padding down there. So the rain and sleet will go up over the windshield and over my head. This is a lot better. All right. Hope you have fun with the car. I hope it's safe and reliable and you make it and everything's cool. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See you guys later. All right. Two thousand miles, Westward Ho. Let's go. This will be one of the cars featured at the uh, Hot Rod Magazine Homecoming. The Homecoming is going to be our 65th anniversary celebration at the Fairplex in Pomona in March. We're assembling as many cover and feature cars as we can find. But this is going to be kind of a once in a lifetime event. I've driven cars with no heaters, but uh, never a roadster in the winter. Piece of cake. <laughs> now let's see. <laughs> let's see what I say in 100 miles. It's raining, and the front of the last few vehicles I've seen have frozen water all over the fronts of their cars. So. I don't know how far we're gonna get, but uh, we're gonna keep going. Hopefully make it to Memphis. <laughs> it's cold and slippery. <laughs> We're done for the day, unfortunately. You could tell when it was getting colder out, 
because the windshield would start getting grayer. So I had to start following white cars because I could see white cars. That way I could kind of stay in between the lines. Then I'd peek up over the windshield and I'd get blasted with ice because <laughs> it was kind of hailing out there. Tomorrow's another day. It should be clear. This should clear out and we'll be good. We're here in Memphis, Tennessee. We had to stop here because of uh, Winter Storm Helen that came in yesterday afternoon. So we thought since we were in Memphis, we would uh, stop by one of the most legendary recording studios in the world. This is Sun Records, and this is where rock and roll got its start, as far as I'm concerned. It's where some of the biggest early rock and roll legends came from. Elvis, Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, Jerry Lee Lewis. It's early and uh, they're not open yet, but we've got to make up for some lost time and uh, hopefully we'll make it to Oklahoma City tonight. Rock and roll and hot rods, it doesn't get any better than that. how much difference a few degrees makes. Yesterday, I had to absolutely stop. Windshield iced up and cars sliding around. I mean, we were, I was done. Today, it's just a few degrees warmer, but with the sun out, dry, so a lot, lot better. Just a little bit of oil pushing through the breather, you know, so it sprinkles on. After 200, 300 miles, it's sprinkling all over the windshield, and then you can't see, so. We're cleaning it with Windex and then we're going to put a little bit of Rain-X on it and see if that maybe helps a little bit. Just over the border into Arkansas, got a little, little rock chip there. Thank God my head wasn't up there. That's where the oil's coming from. It's coming out of the breather. I'm pretty sure. I don't see, I don't see any other spots. I'll tape it and then we'll see if that kind of cuts down on it a little bit. It's not pretty, but I think it'll work. This is the foundation of hot rodding, really, is the Roadster, and specifically a 32 Roadster. They were originally the cheapest and lightest cars that the car companies offered. It made them perfect for racing. They're the simplest, too. They don't have a top. You don't have window mechanisms, because Roadsters only have a windshield. There's no, no windows in the doors, no top. They're a real simple car, which makes them real easy to work on and versatile. They're lightweight, and like I said, they were also the cheapest. So that's why over the years, Roadsters were so popular. Once guys started getting into later model cars, as Roadsters became more old and obsolete, they picked up a whole new following, because then they evoked you know, that whole era when they were popular. You know, there's no cruise control, no air conditioning, no windshield wipers, no turn signals. In a lot of cases, there's no horn, but it's also what kind of makes them fun because they are lacking all that stuff. So it's just kind of, you hang your balls out and you go. And uh, that's what makes them fun. It's day four of our trip back to California. We're just outside of Oklahoma City, and uh, it's, it's a lot colder here, believe it or not, colder than Memphis uh, with the ice storm. Bill said we could do anything with this car we wanted to, and so I'm gonna take him up on it. We've got a long straightaway out here in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma, and uh, so we're gonna do a couple launches, a couple burnouts, and uh, we'll see what we can do.
cruising around Shamrock, which is kind of this uh, abandoned town, and uh, came across a nice boneyard. All kinds of neat stuff in here. This guy was obviously a uh, 57, 56, 57 Chevy guy. That's a 50 Studebaker Commander, bullet nose, a Starlight Coupe. It's got that back wrapping window. Those are the cars that you couldn't tell whether they were coming or going. That's a 57 Hudson. That's the last year for Hudson. And they didn't make very many of them because everybody knew it was going away, number one. And number two, they were such an incredibly horrible looking car. I mean, Bill's Roadsters outlasted pretty much all these cars with maybe the exception of a couple of old pickups over there in this Model A. This is a 2829 Sport Coupe. Fairly complete, although I wouldn't want to be the one to restore it. We're getting enough oil to where it's actually going over the uh, top of the windshield frame and I don't want to get splattered with oil. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the diaper back on the uh, blow-by, which actually works pretty good, and uh, we'll press on. That cow's staring at me. I can't pee when people are watching me. I wonder what it's thinking, or if it thinks at all. thing about this area right here is we go from the desert floor to I don't know 8,000 feet whatever it is 9,000 feet in Flagstaff in about 20 or 25 miles but in Albuquerque where we just left and uh, Flagstaff it's been getting down to single digits at night. You know, it gets really cold, middle of the night, first of the morning. And you can see now, just in the little bit of time, we went from little shrubby green things out there, to now we're starting to get the taller pines. So this change is very quick. Just back there, I saw a sign for the first time for Los Angeles, 487 miles. At this point, I think I should just blitz it, although I just got through saying I wouldn't drive in the middle of the night, but see if I can do it, but no, I'm not going to. Last night we pulled into Kingman, Arizona, which is just on the border between Arizona and California. The plan today was to go to Hoover Dam, but on the way here, I kept noticing a kind of a light plume of smoke off the back end of the car. And so we pulled off and uh, the engine's definitely leaking. My suspicion is that uh, it's the oil pan that needs to be kind of tightened up. It's a brand new rebuilt engine and things sometimes loosen up a little bit after 500,000 miles. After 2,000 miles, sub-freezing weather, eight states, and no top, I enjoyed every minute of driving Bill's Roadster and would do it again in a second. Just not in the winter. <laughs>